I have just watched True Detective Night Country's second episode and let me tell you, it was scary, spooky, but also revealing so much about this season's connection to season one. You must have all heard the Tuttle United name drop along with the dancer Travis having the surname Cole. I want to do an episode breakdown where I explain all the connections to season 1 so far, along with Raymond Clark and his history with Annie Kay. Looking at these details might reveal how and why the researchers died in that horrible way. Let's start, I have a lot to say. Raymond Clark I'll begin with Raymond Clark, yes the guy that was wearing Annie's pink coat. The same guy who was shaking and who said, she's awake. He's also the only one whose body could not be found, he's still alive, that's for sure. If you look at Clark's biography on Salal's website, we see that he was a paleomicrobiologist, which is basically the study of microorganisms that are associated with prehistoric material. Let's remember what Bryce, the teacher, said to Danvers. The researchers at Salal were trying to sequence the DNA of an extinct microorganism that potentially could stop cellular decay, which means that they were looking for an ancient microorganism whose DNA could also stop the aging process, so they were looking to find the cure for immortality. Let's leave this here for a second, I'll come back to it in a minute. In this episode, we also see that Clark and Annie Kay had a relationship, they even had the same spiral tattoo. Clark also had a trailer full of stuff dedicated to Annie. It looked like a sort of a shrine, with a dummy wearing possibly her clothes. All of this makes me think Clark was obviously in love with Annie and he went mad after she died. That would explain his weird behavior at the station as told by the people the police interviewed. Tuttle United I have to talk about the Tuttle United here because I think they explain the spiral tattoo on Annie's body and why we keep seeing it everywhere. I believe Annie was one of the victims of the Tuttle family's pedo ring and Clark knew about it. So for those who don't remember, Tuttle was the name of the family who ran the pedophile ring in season 1. That season ended with the governor Tuttle becoming a US senator which meant he had more influence and power. I wouldn't be surprised for that family to fund a research facility in Alaska. Keep in mind, the research facility in question is looking for the fountain of youth. They are searching for the key to immortality. That's exactly what a rich family like the Tuttles would want to have. So the Tuttle United funding a research center to look for ancient microorganisms that would prevent cellular decay connects the evil side of season 1 to this one. As for the tattoo, you know the victims in season 1 had the same one. We also know Annie Kay had one, so I'm assuming she was a victim of the Tuttle family. She must have been killed by the Tuttle cult to keep their activities secret. Being in love with Annie, Clark may have wanted to get revenge by killing his co-workers, who he thinks have a share in killing Annie, since they work for the Tuttle United altogether. However, I must admit, it seems early to arrive at the conclusion that Clark was the one who murdered his co-workers. He seems like an obvious suspect introduced too early in the story to be the actual culprit. So, although I believe he had a hand in the murder, maybe drawing the spiral tattoo on his co-workers, I don't think he ends up being the real murderer. The ancient microorganism in question or something else, maybe a bacteria must have affected the researcher somehow as I talked about in another video. They must have come across it while mining the ice or while working on it at the facility, which might have caused them to act in a panicky and crazy state, running off into the cold half naked. In the end, there may not be a human murderer as the wounds the researchers had were self-inflicted. They killed themselves but what caused it? A bacteria from the ice? We'll find out. She's awake. There's still one question that keeps bugging me. Who's awake? Maybe Clark was referring to the ancient microorganism as a she, but Navarro and Denvers also heard the same phrase. Both investigators hearing the phrase could represent them getting reminded of loose ends of Annie's case since they both knew about the tongue found in the scene. So she in question could be Annie. I want to hear your theories on this. Rust and Travis Cole I talked about this as a theory in my previous video, but now it became certain for me that Travis was Rust's father. In season 1, Rust says that his father's name is Travis. While undercover with the biker gang, he uses the excuse that his dad is sick and has to take a leave to visit him. Later, while being interviewed by the detectives, he says his dad had leukemia, that's why he had to take emergency time off. 
We also know that he's from Alaska and he went back there for 8 years to work as a fisherman. Watching Fiona Shaw in this episode also made me go back to season 1. Her mannerisms, the way she spoke and smoked that cigarette felt like she was doing a Rust impression. We don't know if she's Rust's mother, but to me it seems certain that they know each other. With all of these connections, you might be wondering if Rust Cole is going to make an appearance. Honestly, I don't think so, but it's obvious that the cases from season 1 and season 4 are connected thanks to the Tuttle United's involvement. Other remarks In a previous video, I talked about the Dyatlov Pass incident and it being an inspiration for this season's event. The hikers of that incident were found in a very similar state that we saw in episode 2. They were in different stages of undressing, most likely because of hypothermia. Their eyes and ears were gorged out. Denmers also made a funny reference by saying there were no yetis in this case, referring to the wild theories after the Dyatlov Pass incident, when people argued that it was a yeti who killed all these hikers. Also, when Denmers showed the spiral design to the cleaner lady and the one with the black eye, it didn't seem like they didn't know about it. They were almost mocking Denmers with their facial expressions. So I do believe they and more people in town have more knowledge about the spiral design. Overall, I enjoyed this episode a lot and thought that it answered a few questions while giving us some more mystery to be solved. We still don't know why the researchers ran away from the facility and the whereabouts of Clark is not clear yet. There is also one researcher who is in a coma, I wonder when he'll wake up. Tell me your thoughts about the episode in the comments. Do come back tomorrow, I'll do a breakdown of the trailer for episode 3. Don't forget to like and share, subscribe to next season for more, see you soon.